On Sunday, we saw the election of uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil in the second round of the presidential uh, elections, where he got about 55% of the vote against the candidate of the Workers' Party, Haddad, who received 45% uh, of, the, of the vote. Uh, th this is clearly, there's no two ways about this, it's clearly a setback. Uh, a reactionary candidate has been uh, elected. Uh, it's a setback for the workers and the poor in uh, Brazil and beyond through, throughout the whole uh, region. Uh, but we need to understand, first of all, what is the context of this uh, election. The election took place with uh, the main presidential candidate for the PT, for the Workers' Party, Lula, in jail and barred by the Supreme Court from standing in this uh, election. At the time when he was uh, disqualified as a, as a candidate, he was first in the opinion poll. So it's quite clear that there was an intervention of the judiciary, of a branch of the state, in order to prevent the most popular candidate from standing in the election. So you can see that uh, the Brazilian state did help uh, Bolsonaro get uh, elected. On top of this, there were a whole, this was a very polarized campaign. Between the first and the second round, particularly, there were a whole number of uh, incidents, violent incidents, uh, assaults against uh, supporters of the Workers' Party, people being attacked just for, for wearing uh, uh, an election uh, T-shirt of the, of the left wing. And so this was far from being a normal democratic election uh, campaign. There were also attacks on freedom of expression in more than 20 universities. The military police came on orders from the electoral uh, court to prevent uh, meetings against fascism, to bring down banners that have been put up by the students against fascism and, and so on. And this obviously had an impact on the, on the election uh, result. Now, many people say uh, Bolsonaro is a fascist and what we've seen in uh, Brazil on Sunday is the beginning of a fascist dictatorship. Uh, uh, now, this is not true in, in my opinion, this is not the, not the case and we need to maintain a sense of proportion. Bolsonaro is a reactionary politician, a far-right politician if you, if you want, he's a former army captain and throughout his political career he has made clear his political views which are very outrageous, extreme and reactionary. He's a homophobe, he's a misogynist, he's a racist. He has uh, made some very inflammatory statements about every single uh, uh, subject. For instance, he says that he's a supporter of torture. He complimented the military dictatorship in Brazil, but criticized it for not having killed more people rather than just torturing them. He says Pinochet. Uh, the dictator of uh, Chile is his model. There, there's no doubt he is a reactionary uh, politician. But fascism is a particular type of reaction. Fascism is uh, based on uh, the mobilization of armed gangs uh, of the petty bourgeois to physically destroy the organizations of the working uh, class. And fascism came to, came to power in the 1920s and 1930s in a number of European countries on the basis of the failure of the workers' organizations to take power, on, on the failure of a, a number of revolutionary uh, opportunities. This is not the case in Brazil. Uh, Bolsonaro is not based on uh, fascist, armed fascist gangs in the streets. Uh, and Bolsonaro has not come to power on the basis of the physical destruction of the organizations of the working class. The trade unions in Brazil continue to exist and they are very strong. Only a year ago, in 2017, they organized a general strike against the economic measures of the Temer uh, government and uh, about 40 million workers participated in strikes and mass demonstrations and, and so on. Uh, political parties continue to be legal, uh, etc. This is not to uh, downplay the danger that Bolsonaro represents. There are in Brazil uh, fascist uh, gangs. They're quite small, but nevertheless they are dangerous. And already one person has been killed in the election uh, campaign uh, by a supporter of uh, Bolsonaro. We will see more of these attacks as Bolsonaro is in uh, power and these fascist gangs will be emboldened. But what we will see above all, I, I think, is the use of the state apparatus uh, to repress the social movements. This is not new in Brazil. 
In fact, uh, the, the state already used the military police, uh, the, the courts and the tribunals to attack the social movements for, for the last few years, particularly after the big movements of the youth in 2013 uh, against the hike, the increase in the uh, price of uh, public transport and uh, the protest against the World Cup in 2004 and 2014. The, the state in Brazil is already very reactionary and uh, the Brazilian police, for instance, for instance in uh, Rio de Janeiro, is known for extrajudicial killings of mainly black youth in the favelas, in the poor uh, neighborhoods. This we will continue to see and we'll probably see an, an increase in these uh, uh, actions. But this does not uh, equal, this does not mean uh, exactly the same thing as if we had a fascist dictatorship in, in Brazil. That, that would be quite something else. Now, uh, still, we need to understand how come uh, such a reactionary politician, extreme right-wing politician with such outrageous views has come to, has come to power and has, win, has won a, an election in a, in a country like Brazil, which is a, which is a large country with a, an electorate which is, which is composed of o over 140 million uh, uh, people. Some people have offered different uh, explanations to, to this. Some people say, well, there's been the, the, he has been very skillful, skill, skillful in, in using the network of the evangelical churches, which have grown in influence and in size in the whole of Latin America in recent times. Uh, other people say that the main reason we, why he was elected was the use of uh, fake news, um, false messages uh, spread through uh, WhatsApp networks. Uh, and these are obviously contributing factors, but, but this in reality that doesn't explain why he won the, the election. If you say that uh, propaganda wins an election, then this is also a very defeatist point of uh, view because the ruling class will always use any means at their disposal, the mass media, the television and, and social media, to spread the poison, the racism and, and their political uh, views. So we will never be able to win. In fact, in Brazil for many years, the ruling class launched uh, waged a campaign against Lula, the, the, the first president uh, elected uh, on, the, on the Workers' Party ticket, to say that he was a communist, that he was going to abolish religion, that he was going to uh, unleash class war and so on, and uh, in order to prevent him from being elected. And nevertheless, he won the election in 2002 with 61% of the, of the vote. So obviously, bourgeois propaganda has an impact on, uh, on an election, but it's not an absolute uh, uh, question. In fact, if we want to understand why there's been, there's been such a discrediting of all political uh, parties and institutions in Brazil, which has allowed uh, an extreme right-wing candidate to win, we need to go back to the track record of the, uh, of the governments of the PT, which has been in power in Brazil between 2002 and 2016. The, the PT is, uh, is uh, known as the Workers' Party, was created uh, during the struggle against the dictatorship as a, as a political representation, the political voice of the working class. And at the beginning it had a very radical program, a socialist uh, program, you could, you could say. But as it came closer to power, the, it uh, progressively moderated this program. And by the time it was uh, elected to the presidency and, uh, and uh, Lula, in, uh, 90, in, in 2002, uh, Lula had already accepted the capitalist uh, system, had abandoned the socialist principles of the party and carried out the policy within the limits of the capitalist system. In fact, the first uh, reform of the pension system, counter-reform of the pension system, was implemented by Lula. But, but the difference was that Lula presided over a long period of economic uh, growth. So, uh, in fact, most workers benefited from, from that uh, period. There were wage increases above inflation. The working class was enormously, enormously strengthened. And many people remember those years, even though he carried out a, a number of counter-reforms, as, as a positive uh, thing. These were years of economic growth and general advancement in, in living uh, standards. When Dilma was uh, elected, in uh, 2010, the situation already started to change. Brazil had entered into uh, an economic uh, crisis 
And uh, when, when she was re-elected in 2014, that was like the last chance that uh, the workers gave Dilma to come to power and transform uh, the situation. Uh, Dilma stood in the second round against the right-wing candidate and she accused the right-wing candidate of wanting to privatize, of wanting to cut the so social spending and generally implement policies of austerity. But when she was elected by a narrow majority in the second round, then she immediately proceeded to implement precisely those policies, policies of austerity, cuts in public spending, repression against the social movements. And we also have to remember that both governments, uh, the, the governments of uh, Lula and the government of Dilma, were governments of an alliance with the bourgeois parties. Uh, key bourgeois parties were part of that uh, government. In the case of Dilma, for instance, she appointed uh, uh, the, the, the head of the association of cattle ranchers and landowners as the Minister of Agriculture. And she appointed uh, an IMF banker as the Minister of uh, Finance. And so that gives you an idea of the kind of uh, policies that government uh, followed. And so when the crisis hit uh, uh, Brazil very uh, hard in 2014-2016, this was the government that was in power carrying out austerity policies. So when people started protesting, mainly youth, against this government, the, the, they were protesting against the establishment, and the establishment was the PT. Uh, and, and many workers who had voted for the Workers' Party for all their lives, who had uh, secured PT governments for over a decade, were now sick and tired of this. And, and the links between the Workers' Party and the organized working class started to break uh, down. It was at this point when uh, the popularity of uh, Dilma was at, a, at an historical record low of only 8%. But then a section of the ruling class decided to move against her. The ruling class uses uh, left-wing governments to carry out austerity policies. When these governments are discredited, then they throw them uh, out, they throw them away. And in this case, they used a constitutional parliamentary maneuver, the impeachment, in order to remove Dilma from power in 2016. There were also a number of uh, corruption cases affecting not only the PT, but all parties. But obviously the PT, having been the party in power for the longest period of time, was the party that had probably more people involved in these corruption scandals. This led to a general discrediting of all political uh, parties. Temer, Temer who, was, who is a, a right-wing bourgeois politician who had been in a coalition with Dilma, he was uh, Dilma's vice president, uh, then came to power and uh, immediately attempted to implement even more austerity measures, more privatizations. He was met by fierce resistance on the part of the working class. There was a general strike, as I said, in 2017. But it is in this context that we need to understand why the PT was unable to defeat the far-right candidate. People were sick and tired of broken uh, promises. The confidence of the workers in this party to transform society had been uh, broken and discredited. And this is what set the ground for the election, finally, of, uh, of uh, Bolsonaro on uh, Sunday. What will happen uh, next? Well, obviously, the capitalists are very happy, they're very pleased. The stock exchange has gone up in uh, Brazil, and they're basically cheering Bolsonaro because Bolsonaro has promised to carry out austerity policies, brutal austerity policies, including the privatization of all state-owned companies, and the brutal counter-reform of the pension system. In my opinion, once these economic policies started, start to be implemented, there will be fierce resistance on the part of the working uh, class. The workers in Brazil have not been uh, defeated, the forces are intact, and they will move to resist such policies from being implemented. In the same way that we have seen that after the election of Macri, of the Macri government in Argentina in 2015, we have seen already four general strikes and increased militancy of the working class against this right-wing uh, government. It will be a period of polarization, polarization to the right, as we've seen in the election of Bolsonaro, polarization to the left as well in the form of working class struggle. And already we see the students at the forefront of such resistance against the policies of the reactionary policies of the Bolsonaro government. Finally, I think that there are some general 
conclusions that we, we need to draw from this uh, experience in uh, Brazil, from the election of a far-right uh, president. The first one is that uh, if you have a left-wing government, a government uh, of a party that's linked to the labor movement, that comes to power promising change and finally implements policies of austerity, policies within the limits of the crisis of capitalism, this uh, government will be discredited and the failure of this government will open the way for the right wing to come to power. And the second, uh, the second lesson I think we need to learn, which is also important, is that you cannot fight the policies of the far right uh, by presenting yourself as the establishment. Haddad said we need to unite all Democrats against fascism. But for many people, democracy meant corruption, uh, high levels of unemployment. And when he talked about uniting all Democrats, he was talking about uniting the Workers' Party with the bourgeois politicians, which had just removed Dilma from uh, power and were thoroughly discredited. On this basis, you cannot fight uh, the far right. You, you need to fight. You know, the only way that you can fight against the far right is by presenting an alternative, not by presenting oneself as being the status quo, the establishment. We, we need to fight against the establishment, but from the left. I, we need to fight against capitalism with bold socialist uh, policies, with policies of renationalization, with policies of uh, free education, free housing, free healthcare, which are increasingly uh, popular. That is, we need to offer a, a a perspective of socialist uh, transformation. In Brazil, we need uh, to keep our heads uh, cool. We need to understand uh, fundamentally the reasons why this has happened as, as the premise for restarting the struggle, continuing the struggle, the resistance against this uh, left, uh, against this far right uh, government and uh, rebuilding a workers' movement uh, on the basis of a socialist program, a clear anti-capitalist uh, program, a program based on the defense of the interest of the working uh, class.